Hello everyone, welcome to topic 310, solubility, where we will explain the relationship between the solubility of ionic and molecular compounds in aqueous and non-aqueous solvents and the intermolecular interactions between particles. So solubility describes the extent to which a solute will dissolve into a solvent to form a solution. A lot of solute can, if a lot of the solute can be can dissolve, it is described as highly soluble. If very little dissolves, it is described as slightly or sparingly soluble. If uh, none can dissolve, it's described as non-soluble, insoluble. For the most part, you don't have to remember a lot of uh, the solubility rules, and we will come to them in more detail when we talk about the solubility constant later. But what you should know is the SNAP rule. And that is anything with sodium, sodium ions, nitrate ions, um, ammonium, which is NH4, acetate, and potassium. Okay, where sodium is Na, nitrate is NO3, remember that has a 1 minus charge. Ammonium is NH4 with a 1 plus, acetate is C2H3O2, 1 minus charge, and potassium is K plus. Okay, so those are the ones you need to remember, and that um, these are always soluble. So if we're talking about a compound or something in solution, these are good um, ions that would help us get something into solution that we normally wouldn't, okay, because they're considered to be all, always soluble. So water is a common solvent because it has the ability to dissolve many different substances. When a solution has water as the solvent, the solution is referred to as an aqueous solution. Water is a good solvent because it is a highly polar molecule. It has two sets of lone pairs, the highly electronegative oxygen atom, meaning that the electrons are pulled towards the oxygen, leaving the hydrogens with the partial positive. The lone pairs give the water a bent or angular molecular geometry, which results in a bond angle of 104.5. So when an ionic compound is dissolved into water, oops. the ions become hydrated. A hydration is the process where the water molecule surrounds the ions to dissolve them, right? And so we call this a hydration shell, where the water molecules orient according to their dipole around the cations and anions to dissolve it. And this happens and successfully dissolves when the solvent to solute interactions are strong. When a um, where am I? Sorry, guys. This attraction is referred to as an ion dipole. Water can also dissolve non-ionic substances as well, as shown in this image over here. Okay, the water is attracted to the polar part of the acetic acid molecule. The OH on the acetic acid is capable of forming a hydrogen bond with water. This attraction allows the acetic acid to dissolve into water. Notice that the acetic acid molecule does not break apart like the um, ionic compound. So the hydration shell forms around the polar component of, so the double O bond on the C double O bond and then the hydrogen bonding on its OH group. But it doesn't necessarily form a hydration shell around the nonpolar part of acetic acid. Note, not all substances can dissolve in water. The memory aid for determining solubility is like dissolves like, but remember, don't say that on the test. Refer to the intermolecular forces, okay? Substances with similar intermolecular forces to the solvent will dissolve, but substances with IMFs that differ are unlikely to dissolve. There are three steps that must occur in order for a solution to form. The solute particles must separate, 
which requires energy to pull something apart. The solvent particles must separate, energy must pull apart. So it takes energy to break attractions. Then the solute and solvent particles must come back together, so reform bonds, and that releases energy. So energy is not stored in bonds or in attractions or any sort of thing like that. The amount of energy needed for each step depends on the intermolecular forces of the materials you're separating. The stronger the intermolecular forces, the greater the energy involved. Polar substances will dissolve into polar substances and nonpolar substances into nonpolar substances. Nonpolar substances do not dissolve into polar and vice versa because there is not enough energy. There is not enough energy released in the last step to negate the energy required for the first two. They don't attract each other very well in step three. So it takes too much energy to break them apart and you don't release that energy back out. So it ends up being an energy deficit in the negative direction. So when two substances can mix, we call that miscible, like vinegar and water. When they cannot mix, they are said to be immiscible, like oil and water. So for our I do, for each of the following substances, determine the types of intermolecular forces present, then decide if the substance will dissolve better in hexane or water. Okay, so we're going to fill in the types of intermolecular forces for each in each substance and then determine if they will dissolve. So sodium chloride has ions. C3H8, those are all um, nonpolar bonds, so that's London dispersion force. CO2, while the bonds are polar, they cancel out, so that's London dispersion force. And then CH2O, if we drew it, which you can draw it, would look like this, and we see that this would form a dipole in that direction. So that means that this not only has London dispersion forces like everything, this also has dipole. Now if we look at hexanes, they are again only CH bonds, so those are all nonpolar, so that's London dispersion force. And then water, because it's a compound, has London dispersion force. It is also capable of dipole interactions, and it can hydrogen bond. So it's got all the stuff going for it. Now we're going to compare the for intermolecular forces of each and decide if they would mix. So ion and just London dispersion, temporary dipoles will not overcome the ion attraction between the sodium and the chloride ions. So this would not dissolve, so we would write no. London dispersion with London dispersion, that would be a yes and a yes. But because here it's a very small molecule and has a pretty significant dipole and is a polar molecule, we would say no on the CH2O molecule. Now if we look at water, the ion would dissolve in water because it has strong dipole interactions with it, so that would be a yes. But the nonpolar substances would be no's because they don't have enough intermolecular forces in common to make the solute solvent interaction energetically favorable. And then finally for the last one, because the last one is polar and they can do the dipole-dipole interaction, that would be a yes. Okay, so for the we do, draw a molecular level diagram that shows what happens when the following reaction takes place. Be sure to show the solutions before and after the reaction takes place and include a key. So one of the things I want you to make sure you use is that this is water, and that's pretty much my key. We are going to look at these and see that we need particles for those. The easiest way is to just draw it and label it. And then from there, you are going to draw these hydration shells. So pause the video and I want you to attempt to draw these. 
Okay, so before you should have the same ratio of chloride to sodium to nitrate to lead ions that you do in the um, balanced reaction up here. Okay, so I have two, 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 one, and you should see two, two nitrates, two sodium, one lead, and that's before. And then you should have water surrounding it. You don't have to go overboard. I just did four for four sides in two dimension with the negative ends oriented towards positive, so oxygen oriented towards the positive ions, and then the hydrogens oriented towards negative ions. Then when they bond, you see that lead becomes solid, so the chloride and lead ions are stuck together, and because it's a solid, I put it at the bottom of the image, indicating solid that sinks. And then you redraw your hydration chills around nitrate and sodium because those are left over and not forming a solid as shown on the product side. So now using this information, continue with the you do's. Check your answer and thank you for turning, tuning in.